Now, an international team of scientists working on a project in the United States say that they have discovered strong evidence for the existence of a new force of nature. They say that some subatomic particles, called muons, don't behave in a way predicted by current theories of physics. The universe is our home. It houses our dear Milky Way galaxy and solar system. For decades, scientists have studied this vast world to know what it is, how it came about, and how it functions. So far, we've only gathered bits and pieces of facts. But the recent discovery with the James Webb Telescope suggests something no one expected. The universe is an atom. So, how authentic is this claim? And what are the facts and details to prove it? Does this mean everything else we thought we knew about the universe is wrong? And if humanity is indeed living in an atom, what does the future hold for us? Join us in this video as we discuss these and more. The study of the universe has attracted not only our modern day scientists, but also the scientists and philosophers before them. Aristotle, Thales, Pythagoras, and Empedocles were among the earliest philosophers who tried to make sense of our world. But no groundbreaking discoveries were made until later innovations like telescopes and space probes. The James Webb Space Telescope has helped us understand in more detail how the universe began. When it became fully operational, the science community knew great stuff would come out of it. James Webb has unlocked fascinating mysteries in the universe since its launch. And now, it has discovered that the universe might be an atom. This discovery sheds light on an ancient theory and perspective scientists have always had. As shocking as it may sound that we're living in an atom, some researchers have always had a hunch about this. This is because, strangely, there have always been many similarities between the atom and some parts of the universe. For instance, have you ever wondered why our solar system so closely resembles Boyle's model of an atom? For example, Planets orbit around the sun like protons and neutrons orbit around a nucleus. The great scientist Niels Bohr even admitted this. In his model of atoms proposed in 1913, he revealed that atoms comprise a nucleus and some electrons that orbit around them just like planets orbit around the sun. This model was termed the atom's solar system model. But then, this is only one of the many characteristics our solar system and the atom share. Let's compare a typical model of an atom with our solar system. First, you'd notice these two are tiny parts of a whole. Atom is the smallest unit of matter, while the solar system is about one of the smallest units of the universe. Also, there are similarities in the spaces and sizes of the focal point of atoms and the solar system. The focal point of an atom is its nucleus, while the focal point of the solar system is the sun. An atom of hydrogen, for example, has a nucleus 10,000 times smaller than the atom. Similarly, the Sun is about 200,000 times smaller than the solar system in which it exists. Also, a major part of the space in both atoms and the solar system is empty, save for the microscopic particles moving around. Another area we see remarkable similarities between the atom and the solar system is in the forces of attraction. The attractive forces confine the planets to the solar system and the electrons to the atom. For the atom, electrical forces act between the components. For the solar system, gravitational forces act between the components to hold them together. The particle charges generate the electrical forces in atoms. In contrast, the gravitational forces in our solar system are generated by the masses of objects such as stars and planets. However, electrical forces in atoms are greater than gravity forces in space, which is why electrons orbit around nuclei without colliding. Besides circling an orbit, electrons and planets rotate around their axes. The Earth, for instance, revolves around its axis and takes about 24 hours to complete a full 360-degree rotation. This rotational motion causes the variation in time zones. The side of the Earth facing the Sun gets daylight, while the other side experiences nighttime. Scientists call this rotational motion in planets and electrons spin angular momentum. Unlike orbital angular momentum, this spin angular momentum can change due to external pressures or interactions with other objects or particles. For example, the direction of spins can flip in planets when they interact with tidal forces or other planets. One other significant similarity between atoms and the Earth's solar system is expansion. 
Atoms in solar systems expand and contract under certain conditions. Atoms can increase in size when heated or stimulated by electric current. Similarly, solar systems can increase in size and area when dark energy or other cosmic forces interact or act on them. We've noticed this often in our solar system. As dark energy increases the distance between planets, atoms expand or contract due to thermal or electrical effects but the solar system expands due to gravitational or cosmic effects. However, although atoms expand uniformly in all directions, solar systems can expand unevenly depending on the matter and energy distribution. At the end of the day, atoms and solar systems are parts of a more extensive system that keeps expanding. Atoms are small components of molecules that are a component of matter, while matter is a component of the cosmos that constantly expands due to dark energy. Similarly, our solar system is a component of the Milky Way galaxy, which is a component of galaxy clusters, which are components of superclusters, and all of these grow due to dark energy in the universe. Now, we know the similarities between atoms and solar systems. How about the similarities between atoms and the universe? Some scientists and philosophers have studied atoms and the universe closely and formulated theories to highlight the striking similarities between the two. The universe and atoms have smaller components that follow unique patterns and principles. For instance, atoms comprise the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons that interact via electromagnetism. Similarly, stars, planets, and other space objects interact with one another through forces such as gravity and dark energy. The theory of expansion also shows the similarity between atoms and the universe. The universe and the atom are constantly expanding. Atoms, for example, expand when heated or stimulated by electric currents or light. The universe, on the other hand, expands due to the presence of dark energy. Dark energy is the unseen force that causes space to stretch faster than gravity can push it back together. Some physicists have proposed that dark energy is the quantum fluctuations of vacuum energy that are subatomic. These events cause tiny fluctuations in energy and density in empty spaces in the universe, which may have a large-scale effect on the universe, causing an expansion. However, this hypothesis has flaws and paradoxes, so it isn't generally accepted. The theory of origin is another theory that shows the similarities between atoms and the universe. This theory holds that the universe and the atom are connected to the origin of everything. Atoms, solar systems, and everything we see today can be traced back to a joint historical event, the Big Bang. Atoms were created by primordial nucleosynthesis shortly after the Big Bang. This was when protons and neutrons combined to create the first elements in the universe. The solar systems you see today developed due to gravitational collapse, which occurred billions of years after the Big Bang. During this process, dust and gas clouds consolidated to form stars and planets. Similarly, the universe began as a singularity, that is, it started as an infinitely dense and hot point before exploding to create space and time. In other words, the theory thus argues that atoms and the universe can be traced back to a shared origin, the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory asserts that the universe began as a Big Bang or explosion. The theory explains that the universe began about 13.8 billion years ago as a singularity. A singularity is a point of infinite density and zero volume. It postulates that the universe was initially an extremely dense and hot point, but then it started expanding rapidly, creating space-time matter and energy. The Big Bang theory is believed by most of the science community, as universal features like the CMB radiation and the constant expansion of space and formation of stars and galaxies seem to support this claim. According to the Big Bang theory, singularity, which started everything, existed during the Planck epoch era. During this time, the laws of physics as we know them today were not applicable. The universe was unstable, incredibly hot and energetic. The singularity then proceeded through an inflation phase. This was a brief period of exponential expansion. During the inflation phase, the universe expanded ferociously and temperature and energy also fell. Scientists also believe this inflation stage smoothed out abnormalities in the universe's original state, resulting in the homogeneous universe we see today. The inflation also produced microscopic quantum fluctuations that helped build the foundation for the universe's later structures. After the inflation phase, the universe went through a stage called reheating. During this phase, the universe was filled with a hot plasma of elementary particles and radiation. 
Subsequently, the universe underwent cooling and condensation, producing increasingly complex structures. Then came the period known as the Dark Ages. During this time, the universe was dark and opaque, with no stars or galaxies yet formed. Scientists believe the Dark Ages lasted for approximately 400 million years, after which the first stars and galaxies formed due to the gravitational collapse of gas clouds. This process is scientifically known as the Reionization Epoch. It marks the start of the cosmic dawn. However, the early stars and galaxies were nothing like the ones we see today. They were notably larger, hotter, and brighter. Plus, they didn't live very long. Most of these stars died to give birth to the currently existing stars in our galaxies. The death of a star is called a supernova. The release of heavy elements such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and iron always accompanies supernova explosions. Scientists believe these elements were created by the earliest supernova explosions that occurred during the dawn of the universe. These heavy elements enriched the interstellar medium, allowing for the formation of planets and life itself as we know it. Diverse kinds of stars started to form. The early galaxies were smaller, irregular, and more closely grouped than present galaxies, so they merged and interacted more frequently, producing larger and more complex structures. And so, since the Big Bang happened, the cosmos has been expanding and evolving, going through several phases and transitions. Scientists believe the same phases that occurred in the beginning still reoccur today. These include cycles of inflation, reheating, nucleosynthesis, and recombination. The current phase of the universe is dominated by dark energy, a mysterious substance that seems to accelerate the expansion of space. One of the primary missions of the JWST is to investigate the early remnants of the cosmos from the Big Bang period to around one billion years later. The JWST utilizes infrared vision to spy into obscure parts of the universe and give us more information on what the universe looked like over 13.5 billion years ago. Infrared light can pass through dust and gas, ordinarily blocking visible light. This allows the JWST to observe distant objects that have redshifted due to the ever-constant space expansion. In its first year of observations, the JWST produced some astounding discoveries unveiling some of the most distant and ancient galaxies. The JWST has also investigated some of the universe's early black holes and quasars. However, some of James Webb's discoveries are so outstanding and unconventional that they question the existing models of the universe and galaxy creation. And now, the latest discoveries from the JWST point out that our universe is an atom. This shakes the very foundation of all we thought we knew about the universe. But then, as we mentioned earlier in this video, we've only learned bits and pieces about the universe so far. Before now, the most viable theory about the universe was the Big Bang Theory. But, you see, the atom theory could very well explain many things. For instance, it could explain why the universe keeps growing and expanding like atoms. But then, this discovery also raises questions about what the future holds for our universe. If the universe is an atom, where does that leave us? Well, the nature and behavior of dark energy will determine our fate. From what we know so far, dark energy seems to be the real manipulator of the universe. A strong, mysterious force seems to stretch the universe, drawing planets and stars away from each other. This force is called dark energy. Like external electrical forces would influence an atom and cause it to grow, dark energy is the influential force making our universe grow constantly. The nature and behavior of dark energy will determine the universe's fate. Some possible outcomes scientists predict include the big freeze in which everything would freeze and the universe would become cold and empty, like a more extreme version of the Ice Age. The big freeze theory was previously called the heat death. This theory sprung from the law of cooling and expansion. From the look of things, the universe will never stop expanding. And so, this theory holds that the universe will continue to cool as it expands until it gets to a point where it becomes too cold for any living thing to survive in it. There's also the Big Rip. This theory postulates that the universe will keep expanding until it reaches a breaking point where it can no longer hold and tears itself apart. According to this theory, everything, including space-time itself, will be torn apart on a certain doomsday when the universe's expansion climaxes. At this point, the distance between particles will be infinite. This hypothesis was first published in 2003, but it is estimated that this event can only occur in the next 22 billion years. 
Finally, there's another theory called the Big Crunch, which predicts that the universe would collapse into a singularity like how it was before time began. But truly, even if anything were to happen to our universe, there's a chance we'd barely feel the impact. That's because we're living in a tiny fraction of the universe. You see, our planet is a small part of our solar system, and our solar system is a small fraction of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is but a tiny part of a local group of galaxies, which make up a small part of the Virgo supercluster. The Virgo supercluster itself is a part of the Laniakea supercluster, and this supercluster is one of many and contains hundreds of billions of stars and planets. So if the universe is one giant atom, we live in a minute portion. Unless the universe explodes or rips apart inside out, humanity has nothing to worry about living inside an atom. That's all for this video. If you're still here and would like to watch another exciting video, click on any of the thumbnails showing now on your screen. Bye for now.